One of the most basic things we all human needs is to find a purpose. Often a purpose bigger than ourselves. And it's really easy to see all the stories about Silicon Valley startup and to feel envious. Actually, I'm guilty myself. I remember 12 years ago when I was still a beginner, I was looking at the amazing movie The Social Network. I was thinking to myself, wow, this startup thing is really cool. Me too, I want to code things that everyone use and love while doing shots with my friends. <laughs> I was 17 back then and fast forward to today, I ended up never working for any of these big tech companies. Some developers will call it a lack of ambition, but actually it was purely intelligent. In this video, I want to talk about why I'm not working for a thing and why you may not want to do it too. For those who don't know, Fang refers to the stock of five prominent tech companies. Facebook, uh, now Meta, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google, now Alphabet. For many working in one of those companies, it's the holy grail in terms of workplace. And like in a video of Ben Award talking about the same topic, there's a phenomenon called Fang Sexual, pointing to people allegedly sexually attracted to the idea of working for a thing. When this is a bit extreme, I do understand by one, one would be interesting by it. And I do recognize that there is indeed some dope advantages to work for a thing. You get to work with people extremely bright and you have access to problems that only exist at this scale of the company, like handling millions or maybe billions of users using your product at the same time. Your resume will look really good with one of their name in it and it will most likely open a lot of possibilities too. And looking at all the day in your life on YouTube, I think that most people are interested by the free food and the amenities. But I truly think that if your only motivation is to brag about it to your friends or having some sort of status, you'll end up miserable. We are spending most of our time every day working and you should be really empowered by what you're doing. Otherwise, what's really the point, right? Okay, the first point I want to talk about is that those companies are not startup animals. They are big corporations. So most of the most interesting thing that comes into your mind when you think about startup have most likely been already done a long time ago. You will be joining a company with a product which is already mature and with less wiggle room for you to hack and experiment with huge and cool features. The thing is that I personally started to code with a true passion to hack stuff, with a true desire to work on many different things and to keep learning every single day. This is a feeling that I always have on small projects. With early stage product, nothing is really set in stone and your job becomes a mix between coding, product owner and product designer. Something that is hardly doable in large tech companies. If you think about it, it just makes sense. Yeah, you arrived after the wars, the product already reached product market fit and you missed all these interesting bits of trial and error. But if you ask me, are the most interesting ones to work on? I was working for a small startup before, spe specifically on features driving acquisition and retention. And it was quite amazing to see that my work had a direct impact on the company revenue. And I'm by no means saying that developers working for Fang are doing less. I'm just saying that they are working on different problems and that they are most likely just another developer in a giant system. Another point that I want to talk about is that most people working for Fang are staying in the same department for a very long time, working on the same problem for quite a bit. When this is an exceptional opportunity to become an expert in a given field, it also means that it will limit you with some technology and it can slow you down in your career progression. While I was doing some research online for this video, I was surprised by how big this problem actually is. I've seen some developer complaining being stuck with the same technology for many, many years, and this can obviously repeal a lot of people, including me. I really like to be flexible with the tech I'm using, and I like to change quite a bit to all always keep learning and to stay versatile. While it can be good in some extent, I really like to be able to work on the whole product and being able to work on different things every single time. Also another thing to note, working for a big tech company means that you will have more people competing for the same roles, meaning that it will get harder for you to get promotions and that most likely will take you many, many years to step up in responsibilities. This is something that you naturally have less on smaller projects. You most of the time have small engineering teams and every developer are touching to every bit of the product. Talking to customer themselves and taking part of every development of the product, which is, in my opinion, something really exciting to do. Okay, another thing to keep in mind with large corporations like that is that they are unwilling to take risks, which makes total sense, right? They have customers, they have investors, they have targets to it, and even the most ridiculous change in BayUX or a bug can cause massive losses. I don't know if you remember this crazy story in 2021 when WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook went down at the same time due to a DNS outage. Okay, just imagine for a second being the one changing something and putting down three of the biggest social network at the same time. It must be quite stressful, right? <laughs> These type of events are usually extremely rare because both companies are making sure that all the systems are locked down and that all the bugs are contained way before the users can even see it. When this is also true on smaller projects, this is a complete different world in products like them, meaning that you will most likely take a longer time to get anything done because this time is needed to triple check every single thing. In a smaller company, you're more agile if 
flexible. You're, cust you're close to your customers and making any change or future becomes way easier. And most of the time, introducing a little bug is not really the end of the world. But don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that you can ship bad code in production like a maniac. It just means that it will be easier and faster to do anything and your coding life will tend to be more interesting and more dynamic. Okay, so keep in mind that both are my opinions. I have no doubt whatsoever that it must be an incredible experience to work for a thing and actually I have many friends doing it and they seem to be really liking it. I just wanted to share my take on why this is maybe not something for you. It's certainly not something for me and it's totally alright. Not landing a job for a thing or if you never work for any of them doesn't mean that you're a bad developer and you shouldn't be your ultimate goal. Okay, now if you want to know more about how I went from self-taught developer to now working for a company earning six figures, I made a video about it and I'm explaining everything in it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be liking it. Okay, I guess bye for now. See you on the next video.